Hi, I'm John, and welcome to Mead Hall. <laughs> Hi, I'm Nina, and welcome to this first episode in my summer mead making series. My goal is to make a bunch of interesting meads for John to try when he gets home. So today we're going to be making the Queen's Methaglin. This is a recipe recorded by Charles Butler in The Feminine Monarchy. It's purported to be the Queen's favorite mead. I chose to do this one first because right now I am in the midst of the New Jersey Renaissance Fair. I'm an actor and performer there, and the theme this year is Queen Elizabeth. I was inspired to do this mead first. Let's get into it. This is a very herby mead. Methaglins are kind of mead made with herbs. But this one is kind of overkill. If you look at the recipe, it calls for a bushel of sweetbriar, a bushel of thyme, half a bushel of rosemary, and a peck of bay leaves. A bushel is huge. So we're gonna make it simple on ourselves. The honey we're gonna be using is South Jersey Pine Barren honey. And I thought to keep it authentic, I would pick some leaves off of a rose bush that we have. The recipe also calls for the use of ale. I'm gonna be using Saf Ale SO4, which is an English ale yeast. This will bring our mead to anywhere from nine to 11% when it's all finished. I'm smelling this plate and it's chaotic but delicious. Knowing how big a bushel is and how fragrant and how potent the Queen's Methaglin must have been, I wanted to err on the side of more herbs rather than less. I love a good historical challenge. I think we've got all of our ingredients, we've got all of our tools, so let's heat up some water. It said to add the herbs at a boil, so. The recipe also says to have everything in the water for about 30 minutes. Oh my gosh. Honestly though, it kind of smells like soup. Okay, it's been a half hour. Ooh. Oh, that's nice. Time to strain. So now that we've made basically an herbal tea, we're gonna add our two pounds of honey. Clearly not boiling anymore, but just warm enough so that the honey will melt really easily. I think this is the least sticky I've ever gotten making mead. <laughs> this is relatively clean. You want everything to mix really nicely together. That's the best part of meat making. So now that everything is nicely stirred, we're gonna take out a little bit of the mousse. And we can put this to the side, wait for that to cool. All right, let's talk about our carboy. So this was possibly a wine jug. And here we have our bung and our airlock. The airlock is filled with water and this helps the CO2 to escape when the fermentation process is happening, and it prevents any foreign things from getting inside of your meat. Star sand. I use star sand to sanitize this bottle because even though this is a medieval recipe, we are modern people and we wanna keep things nice and clean. Another thing to note is that this recipe says to pitch the yeast two days after this process. We're not doing that today because ain't nobody got time for that, so. Even though I love following historical recipes, very closely. We're not gonna do everything exactly the way the recipe says to do it. This is a modern version inspired by the Queen's Methaglin and not an exact replication. I just realized I had blown out the candles. <laughs> I blew out the candles for that 30 minutes so as not to waste the candles. Okay, magic! Let's activate this yeast. So I'm gonna be honest. You probably don't need this whole packet for just a gallon of mead, but it's what we're doing. And once the packet's opened, you kind of have a week to use it. Hi, little yeast. Welcome to the world. Okay, I talked to the yeast. Um. It's a living thing, you know? 
It spends its life eating the delicious sugar that you provide it and pooping out alcohol. So, you know, it's nice to talk to it once in a while. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> we just have to wait for the rest of the wart to cool. Then we'll add the yeast in and then it won't be wart anymore. It'll be mead. Let's take a gravity reading. This is a hydrometer. This will measure the gravity of this liquid and it'll change as it ferments. But it's very important to take this measurement if you care about the ABV of your mead. The gravity is about 1.110. Also, the temperature does affect your gravity. I'm gonna take a little sip. If the tea's horrible, oh my gosh. Oh no, <laughs> what if it sucks? We leach so much flavor out of those herbs. This is gonna be interesting. Mm. <laughs> this yeast! This looks like a dessert. Oh my gosh, we need to get this yeast in here. Oh, that is frothy. Look at yeasty babies. This is gonna be neat. Get in the car, boy. Oh, great. This is why it's good to have someone with you. I'm going to do this on the ground. Sorry, you can't see this part. I'm not spilling any. Okay. Okay, I admit I spilled some. But water could have also evaporated when it was boiling for 30 minutes. You never know. <laughs> Aside from me being a dingus, I'm excited to see how this turns out. Now all we have to do is wait. Anyway, if you would like to... Oh! Did you see that? It just bubbled. It already started bubbling. Holy cow. Yay! It bubbled again. It's like watching paint dry except a painting doesn't make you drunk. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for following me along on this adventure. And I can't wait to make more mead. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. I'll let you know how this turns out in, I guess, six months. I'll see you in the next video. I almost forgot, add your packet of mace and cloves. <clears throat> usually keep the EV but beer yeast usually keep the hmm. first video nailed it <laughs>